Yo, you guys, this is Blacklist of the Abyss, and this is another kind of half-asleep, half-awake review. This time I'm doing the first two chapters of Awadi no Seraph, a.k.a. Seraph of the End. Um, I have actually read the first five or six chapters that were scanlated, but since it's new to the, to the English Weekly Shonen Jump that Fizz does, which I'm a subscriber to, by the way, that's how I get World Trigger, um, they're restarting it from the beginning, and then they're going to catch up. So I figured I'd start my reviews from the beginning. So, um, I'm just going to start off with Chapter 1 Chapter 2. In the beginning, we find out that this is a world where vampires exist. Um, the humans are trapped underground in the vampire's underground world. And they have to, and the price for staying there is giving them their blood. So uh, we know we meet the main characters Mika and Yuichiro, or Yu for short. Um, Yu gets mad at Mika in the beginning because he decide he lets a, one of the nobles suck his blood. Like there, they Yu gets mad that he just willingly goes to a noble and lets him suck his blood. He'd rather him like. I guess I guess it's. To you, it's like Mika just swallowed all of his pride as a human and just became a dog for the vampires, just some cattle. And for you, that's the one thing he doesn't want to be. They treat all the vampires treat all the humans like cattle, and that's the one thing he doesn't want to be treated as. He wants to think that the humans are still better than that, so he's disappointed in Mika. But um, we end up getting this flashback about Mika and you and how they're orphans and lived in the Hyakuya orphanage but uh, a few years ago four years ago I think there was this fire this breakout of a virus and it killed everyone all the humans of, that were 13 or above I don't know how they arrived at that number but whatever um, kills all the humans that are 13 and above uh, the vampires show up and they claim to work for the third progenitor, Cruel Tepes. So, well, we don't, we don't know who he is yet. I mean, it's the third, pro third progenitor, but we don't know, like, a lot about anything about him other than his name and his title. But, um, we, the flashback ends. Mika's coming back from dinner. Uh, everyone's asleep by now. Uh, except for you, of course. But, um, he comes back. He was at Lord Farad's place, letting him suck his blood. But it turns out he wasn't just doing it just because. You know, he was doing it as a strategy, too, in order to, like, help everyone escape. He steals a gun from him, and he also steals a, a map of the layout of the underground world and how to get to the surface. And at this point, they're 12 years old, so they won't be killed by the virus yet. Now, Mika and you are the oldest ones there. They're 12 years old. They won't be killed by the virus just yet. So, they're going to lead everyone from the orphanage outside and escape from the vampires. Uh, they wake everyone up. They get them to the exit. It turns out it was just a big trap by Farad just to mess with them. Uh, <laughs> so, Mika, uh, Mika and you, they're, they're shocked by this. Farad starts killing off kids one by one. And they, Mika and you tell them to make a just break, make a break for it towards the exit. And they'll try and hold Farid off. It, it doesn't work at all. Farid ends up killing all of them. And then working together, Mika and you, they manage to shoot Farid in the head. So good, good for them. <laughs> but Farid ends up taking off Mika's arm in the process. So it's pretty much guaranteed he is dying. All that blood, he's he's dead. He's, he's guaranteed death. But Farad is probably going to have reinforcements come soon. I mean, Farad's dead, so, you know. <laughs> but um, reinforcements are going to be coming soon, thanks to the gunshots and everything. And Mika tells you to run. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense for both of them to die there, for everyone to die. At least have one of them make it out safely. So... Yu reluctantly leaves Mika behind. He makes it to the surface, and it looks like civilization wasn't destroyed at all. 
I mean, the population is going down and everything, but it doesn't look like the world has been destroyed like the vampire said it was. And that's when a few adults walk up to you. And, uh, you know, he's surprised. You know, these guys are adults. They're supposed to be dead. Anyone above 12 is supposed to be dead. Why are you guys alive? And they talk about a prophecy and how, um, you know, just like the prophecy said, uh, he came or whatever, he could be an asset to them and fighting against the vampires. And they mentioned that he was a lab rat for Hiyakuya Laboratories and that it was Hiyakuya Laboratories who are the ones who destroyed Japan. So it turns out Hiyakuya wasn't just an orphanage. They were using the kids as test subjects somehow. They were using them as test subjects, probably for the virus that they created that ended up destroying Japan. So that's, that's how the first chapter ends. Um, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. There wasn't too much action in it, just because it was, it was a lot of setup and everything. It, it felt more like a prologue in the first chapter, but it was, it was still pretty good, so I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. Um, after that, chapter 2 starts. There's a four-year time skip, and you was a private in the Japanese Imperial Demon Army. He destroys this monster thing called one of the four horsemen named John. Whatever, just just go with it. <laughs> just go with it. Um, but he ends up getting suspended from the army for disobeying orders because they didn't want him to fight against the one of the four horsemen named John. They wanted him to retreat. And even though he defeated it easily, they're still going to punish him for disobeying orders. So um, apparently he att he attends Shibuya High School. Apparently, since Shibuya is the base for the Japanese Imperial Demon Army, they're really carefree, and they even let kids go to school normally. <laughs> Though apparently, civilization is not even close to being destroyed as much as at least as much as you and Mika thought it was, and everyone down in the vampire underground world. But um, he almost gets himself expelled because he's thinking, like, "Why am I going to this normal high school?" I'm in the army, I want to kill vampires, that's what I'm here for. Why isn't he putting, why isn't this guy putting me in a vampire extermination unit yet? And the teacher's like, what are you mumbling to yourself for? You know, and he starts going, arguing with the teacher, going back and forth, and he actually asks to be expelled. Then this girl behind him tells him to stop, her name is Shinoa. Apparently she's an army surveillance officer. And she tells him that he's, his suspension is actually going to be extended if he causes more trouble in school. So, he stops. He ends up getting a flashback. We learn that that guy who saved you, his name is Lieutenant Colonel Guren Ichinose. And apparently the world wasn't really destroyed like the vampire said it was. The population was cut to one-tenth of what it used to be. So, still not good, but better than what you thought. Um, Humanity is trying to rebuild itself, and they form the Japanese Imperial Demon Army, which I'm just going to call Jita from now on. Just to not waste my breath with unnecessary syllables. But um, they form Jita in order to try to fight against all the vampires. Flashback ends. Chinoa talks to you after class about how he's a... Or maybe it was during class, I don't really remember. But it was, she talks to him about how he's afraid to get close to people because of what happened in his past with Mika and all the people from the orphanage. He doesn't want to... He doesn't... If he gets close to people, he's afraid he'll lose them again. So, um... He... She... She gives you this letter that Guren Ichinose... Ichinose wrote for him. And it says that someone like him wouldn't be useful in the army because he doesn't know how to work well with others because he likes being alone, doing things on his own, because he doesn't like getting close to people. So, pretty much, what his punishment is for his suspension and everything, he's supposed to stay in that school. I mean, he probably already attended the school, but he probably won't be able to like go back onto active duty until he makes a friend to show that he actually does have the capability to work together with people. So, uh, <laughs> and conveniently, after class is over, some kid comes in, he's getting bullied by these guys, and Shinoa says, hey, go help him out. 
Maybe you'll actually make it into a vampire extermination unit if you do. So he goes over to help him, but then Shinoa says, actually, now that I think about it, you aren't allowed to harm civilians or else your suspension will be extended. So he ends up getting beaten up by the guy Yamanaka. And the guy who's being bullied, Yoichi, he's following him. And he says that he actually wants to join Jita, and that's why he's hanging out with those guys. So one guy said he was going to end up joining Moon Demon Company, who is a famous, they're of this famous group, Vampire Extermination Unit. That's pretty, it's pretty much a group everyone wants to join. So Yuichi says that he wants to join them, join them, that's why he's hanging out with those guys. And the reason he wants to join Moon Demon Company and Jita is because he wants to get revenge for his sister, because his sister was killed by the vampires when she was trying to protect him. And you tries to tell him, you know, no, you shouldn't do that. It's, you know, you might regret not going back to save them, but that's, that was for the best, because what good would it do if both of you died? Then he tells Yuichi that his sister wouldn't want him to get revenge anyway, pretty much. You was a hypocrite, because that's exactly what he wants to do. <laughs> he wants to get revenge on the vampires. But uh, he, he gets his chance. Yeah, he gets his chance, because a little bit later, a vampire escapes from some nearby lab, or something like that. And he wants to run after it and chase it and kill it, so that he can prove himself to Gurren. Prove, prove that he is ready to join Moon Demon Company. So he goes to his locker, grabs his sword, it, he runs by uh, uh, the teacher he was arguing with earlier, and for some reason, he, he has a sword in his hand. It's obvious he's going to go fight this vampire, and the teacher still tells him where the vampire is anyway. And he says, you know, you're not going to go fight the vampire, are you? You shouldn't do that. But it's pretty obvious he's going to do it anyway. He didn't listen to you in class. It makes you think he's going to listen to you now. You know, but you know, obviously that teacher is not very smart. But Yu does exactly as expected. He goes into the classroom. Yamanaka's in the classroom as well. I don't know why he didn't escape. I guess, I, guess, I, don't, I don't even really know why he and that girl on the table were the only ones there, but whatever. Yamanaka didn't escape somehow. But the vampire is sitting on top of the table. It's about to suck the girl's blood. And that's not a good thing, because if the vampire sucks a person, a human being's blood, then their power will be restored. So Yu tries to defeat it before... It has a chance to suck the girl's blood, so he starts to fight the vampire, and it, and he actually manages to cut her left arm off, but she just she just picks it up and puts it back on, <laughs> like nothing happened, and uh, she tries to regain her strength again by going back to the girl and sucking her blood. Yu runs after her and tries to stop her, but he doesn't make it in time. Yoichi, however, comes out of nowhere and tackles the vampire girl. So then Yu comes over and cuts her right arm off this time. But with her left arm, her left reattached arm, she grabs Yu by the neck, runs and forces him out the window. She jumps with him. And she kicks him down to the ground. She lands on top of him and she's about to try and kill him, but Yu stabs her through the chest with his sword. And, and she tells him, you know, that's unfortunate. If you had aimed for my head, you might have actually killed me. But now, you're the one that's going to die. I'm going to suck up all of your blood, regain my strength, and now I'll kill everyone else here, too. But Guren shows up, just in the nick of time, kills her with his cursed blade. So that's something to look forward to later on. Uh, he, Guren kills a vampire with his cursed blade. And you gets up, he says, you know, I... I've proven myself, I protected everyone here by fighting against this vampire, and I almost killed it too. If you hadn't shown up, if you had waited a few more minutes to show up, I would have killed it. And uh, Yoichi comes out of nowhere, says, No, I thought you were dead because you fell out the window. I forgot that this, is, that this is a shonen manga, the main character can't die in the second chapter. But um, he ends up passing out from the pain because he dislocated his shoulder. And uh, Shinoa's there, Guren's there, a bunch of other members of Moon Demon Company are there that we can't see their faces. And Shinoa and Guren decide that maybe, just maybe, it is actually time to let you into Moon Demon Company. So Yu wakes up in the hospital, Yoichi's there, Shinoa's there, and Shinoa lets him know that yes, you have been let into Moon Demon Company. 
So I'll give that chapter an 8 out of 10 as well. I thought it was pretty good. Um, you know, we haven't really got introduced to the main plot yet. We know that you want to kill the vampires, but that's it. that's all we really know. Uh, the character in the, the character introductions are still going on right now, but I'm expecting maybe I'm expecting for the plot to pick up at some point. Like I said, I read like the first five or six six chapters in Scanlation, so this stuff isn't a surprise to me. But um, yeah, in the six chapters, the plot looks like it was starting to move, but I won't spoil that for you guys if you're if you only. If you're only reading it on Physics Weekly Shonen Jump. But that's it for now. Uh, both the first and second chapter of Seraph of the End get an 8 out of 10. And I'll see you guys later.